Hello, my name is Martin Stein. I'm the Chief Financial Officer of Alltech Batteries List Limited. We're listed on the Australian Securities, Securities Exchange under the code ATC. We're commercialising a battery for a lucrative grid storage market that uses sodium chloride or salt technology. And we've also got another project which is looking at placing high capacity silicon in the graphite anode of lithium ion batteries for EVs. Martin, good to see you and welcome. We've not spoken before, um, and we've, but we have followed the story through speaking with Iggy over the years. Um, just raise some money, have that going. Yeah, so we did a share purchase plan. We gave all shareholders the ability to participate and it was well received. We raised Australian 3.721 million through that process. We've got over seven and a half thousand shareholders and very loyal shareholders in the majority and they're very supportive as we move forward with our two battery projects. Fantastic. And, and have, in, in terms of that raise, obviously it's a kind of this. It's an interesting time in the market at the moment. Obviously, you've had you know, three difficult years in terms of the equities. It's been tough. Lithium prices up and up and down. Um, you know, was there was there any kind of difficulty in kind of persuading people to actually you know give you the money, get this thing over line, and allow you to move forward? Look, I agree with you. It is a tough market at the junior end. We didn't oversell. I think we gave the story of what we're doing. We like to keep our shareholders. Commun communications up so they're always aware of what we're doing and I think that paid off with the shareholder uptake and the support that they were providing us with the SPP. Okay, so now you can, you, you kind of funded to move things forward because you're in that interesting phase now. You're in that kind of you know advanced development stage. You know, plant, you know, plant partner etc. In Germany, looking to raise uh, money to kind of you know build build out the plant, whatever that is, hundred seventy, hundred eighty million euros where's that going to come from i mean who, who are the kind of likely funders of that look we did our feasibility study on the serenity battery project and released it in march of this year so it's fresh off the press really now on the back of that we are moving forward in earnest with getting the sales and also getting the finance now in relation to the finance we think it will be combination of equity at the project level, debt in the form of green bonds, uh, and also we're confident in receiving some grant and subsidy funding at the German government, state government, and European Investment Bank level. So we're looking at all three options for finance. We think it will be a mix of all three but it could just be as likely that a equity provider comes along and takes a stake of the project and provides the full funding. But we're keeping our options open. Yeah, for, for, for sure. And, and but all three of all three of those sorts of options are going to require you to kind of show that there's a market for this and that you've got contracts for this and that this business will be making money. So in terms of that kind of commercial side of the conversation. You know, what, what can you tell us uh, in terms of who you're speaking to and, and like, where that revenue is coming from? Well, in relation to the market, grid storage batteries are really the future of the renewable energy transition. Wherever renewable energy is produced, it's produced intermittently. For example, solar doesn't produce it at night time, but the, the grid requires it. So grid storage batteries are going to be in demand. They are in demand. They're going to be further in demand and the industry is growing at 28% compound annual growth rate. So the utility providers that we've spoken to have just said, we want batteries, we need batteries, everything we can get. Yeah. So we're in discussions with uh, multiple German utility providers that are making the transition from lignite coal and fossil fuel power to renewable energy. And as part of this, they need uh, batteries to support the renewable energy transition. So we're speaking to, we've got a hit list of about 20 German customers that we think will take the product, but we're targeting two in particular and we're in negotiations with them to take the full five years of production uh, at the sale price of 885,600 euro per one megawatt hour grid pack so 
Armed with the study that was released in March, we can really push forward hard now on securing that sales or offtake, whatever you prefer to call it, uh, which will lead into obtaining the finance for the plant. Right, and where is the what's the driver for? Like, this is all happening in Germany, as but we'll, we'll we'll use the phrase Europe more more broadly because that's that's the potential here. You, you've got these kind of stackable sea containers, um, which you know, I guess the the different use cases are are um, interesting to me. But this is mainly going to be grid storage. That, that that's the market you're dealing with, right? Just be I'm so clear, yeah. Yes. So. Okay, so but, but I'm, I'm the, the driver for this is obviously off the back of sort of the difficult, you know, um, you know, we had the sort of energy security issues across Europe, um, you know, in the past couple of years. Has that kind of helped with the the story here? Because you know, we, which, you know, in terms of the Russian Ukraine situation, caused all sorts of price spikes across the marketplace. But what what problem are you solving for people with this kind of grid storage solution? Well, it's a problem that has multiple issues one is that it's costing money because germany for example is producing so much renewable energy that the grids can't support it and there's nowhere to store it and last year germany wasted two billion euros of renewable energy that it produced that was literally pumped into the ground and wasted so it's a financial problem they need batteries to store the surplus energy. It is going to become a problem for society and communities in that as the renewables are scaled up further, the grid needs the power 24-7, whereas the renewables are only produced intermittently. For example, solar does it, produce it at night time, but the grid needs it. So as solar production ramps up, the grids are going to need batteries to go onto that to take the surplus of solar produced during the day to return it to the grid at night time. So there's grid stabilization. It's a financial issue and it's an arbitrage issue that is facing grids as they're scaling up renewables. So, 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 so with the product that you've got, this kind of, sort of st- stack will see containers because it's, you know, people talk about like sodium solutions and the issues around energy density, but it doesn't matter here in terms of this use case does it not as much i mean obviously when you're talking about mobile batteries you're talking about putting them into vehicles the weight is critical so but we're targeting the stationary storage where the weight isn't such an issue and to mitigate that because our batteries are solid state and they have no flammable material or they can't explode like lithium batteries do We can take these batteries three high, whereas lithium, because of the safety issues, can't stack on top of each other. So we have a reduced footprint anyway. Right. And the capacity is not that much lesser than a lithium-ion battery. So it's probably 20%. We're operating at about 120 watt-hours per kilogram, where a lithium-ion battery is around 160 watt-hours per kilogram. So we're not that far off. And then you've got other battery technology like vanadium redox flow, which are about 10 to 25 watt hours per kilogram. And we know there's a market for that product as well. Right. Okay. So the the likely buyers of this are going to be the, what, the the utilities or will there be independent companies? I'm just sort of interested in terms of the the scale of the opportunity in front of you. I know this is like, okay, this will be the first plant that you're looking to build, but, you know, thereafter, how does this thing scale up? Who, yep. do you, who will you be targeting? Yeah, so it's such an exciting industry because it's in its infancy and it's nascent. So we're going to see batteries around in many, many different applications in the future. But what we're targeting is the grid utility providers, uh, massive electricity producers that are putting power into the grids and managing the grids. We want to sell all of our product in the first instance to those customers, they have an appetite for a lot of storage capacity, and we think that's the easiest and most likely customer in the first instance. But uh, in saying that, Matthew, we've been approached by <laughs> you name the industry, you know, dairy farmers that want one for their for their farm. Uh, I've been approached by 
high rise residential builders that want batteries in their in their buildings. So I think with renewable energy, wherever it's produced, we're going to need batteries. The end users are limitless and will become even greater, but we're targeting the grid storage utility providers. Right, okay. Yeah, because I think in the other case, uh, you know, if you're selling it one unit at a time, it's, I guess the cost of sale is going to be very, very different profile from, you know, you know where you've kind of got literally got farms of these things stacked three high. Um, indeed. And be, be coming back to that kind of the this is the test case, right? You, you will talk about, you're talking about, uh, we'll, we'll show this one, we can build these things and two, they work. Um, and three with them, we've got to get after, uh, you know, additional sales of, of these things. Is it just, you will sell each unit and I guess what I'm getting at is how do you charge for these things? Do you, do you sell for, here's a physical C container, which is a, a can store energy. Or do you kind of clip a coupon going forward in terms of having like on, ongoing revenue streams? Is it one-off sale and then wait for the, wait for the wait for them to come back and buy more, or how does it work? What are you thinking? Yeah, yeah great question, Matthew. Really great question. I think there's a market for both strategies. Okay, but we're targeting 100% sale in the first instance. This product and any grid storage battery may become an investment that has a return on it as well in time as the arbitrage for energy becomes more sophisticated and the costs of putting your power into the grid increase. There may be an arbitrage market that comes out of that where grid storage batteries are an investment and demand a return. But at this stage, we're just fully looking to sell 100% of the product to the end customer. Okay, so because when, when you look at sort of the RFB uh, market, I think s certainly some of the models mooted were around continuing to own the vanadium it, itself and, and and therefore have this sort of ongoing revenue, but then you have the same, the issues of the initial CapEx out outlay. So it's, it's getting that balancing act, I, I, I guess. So exactly. challenges exactly. ahead. Um, should we, should we, so, so in terms of the, the timing for all of this, because, you know, it's been a, it's a long time in the making to get to this point. So in terms of timing moving forward, what's your expectation around this, these conversations around contracts and, and therefore probably the ability to go and raise capital? Because, you know, part of that may involve government uh, grants or, or incentives um, out there. So not 100% in your control per se, but you must have a sort of sense of how quickly you'd like to get this thing done. Yeah, so we're targeting raising the finance this calendar year and then going into construction of the plant in 2025 uh, and then a two-year construction period and producing batteries around 2027. Interesting. And when, what is the kind of competitive landscape for you at the moment? I've mentioned VRFB, but again, no, no one's really kind of got that off off um, yet. So where do you see the sort of challenges coming from and competition coming well, from? Well, with lithium ion batteries, the Tesla Megapacks, uh, the product, the dominant product at the moment, they have the lion's share of the industry. But of course, they use lithium, they use cobalt, copper, graphite, and manganese. Uh, they're flammable. Um, they have other disadvantages in where they can operate temperature ranges and, and the life of the battery is limited. So... We have advantages over them in those aspects in that our batteries are completely fire and explosion proof and they don't use any copper, cobalt, graphite, manganese or lithium. Um, and we can last these batteries for 15 years and they're not restricted to temperature ranges like lithium batteries are. We can take this battery to minus 40 degrees or positive 60 degrees and it'll operate perfectly well. Right, okay, yeah. Yeah, I was reading through your market material in terms of the the competitive advantages. And what, I, what I'm trying to understand is if I'm um, if I'm a potential buyer of, of this, what are the things holding me back? Because as you say, it's a nascent industry, and nascent industries tend to evolve and, and, and develop. But if I'm kind of committed for the next 15 years worth of battery design, you know, is that going to hold me back somewhat, or do they kind of play the field? I mean, what are the conversations like when you're trying to get people over the line? Yeah, well, I think. You're talking about the timing of getting that product to the customer and 
you know, we need a customer that can wait the two years to get the product. The customers, but the potential customers we've spoken to have said that they want all sorts of battery technologies and they just need batteries to meet the net zero targets, right? So when you're talking about the world transitioning to electrification, it's not going to happen overnight. We have a product that has passed all of the research and development, which puts us ahead of a lot of different battery technologies. And we are now taking that successful research and development and commercializing what's already been achieved. So a lot of the work has been done to get to this level that puts us ahead of a lot of different technologies. And do you think that's part of the competitive advantage? Being kind of, you know, for, well, that kind of first mover advantage is that first to market makes it harder for people coming behind you. It does because batteries are all going to be about economies of scale. And the ones that can get to gigawatt capacity the quickest are going to be the ones that take the market share because the next line coming in isn't going to get to that capacity as quickly and they're going to be producing more expensive products. So um, getting to the gigawatt capacity, producing at economies of scale and then being able to replicate that in different geographical regions around the world first is going to put a company at an advantage. Excellent. Okay. Okay. And so what, 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 would, what would you say to you, like Cheryl was looking at this? Because it's been, like I say, I say tough, tough markets. You guys have sort of, you know, held, held your own as, as it were. Um, where's, where's the growth? What's the growth component that we're looking for? Is it literally, we will get this thing funded, we will get it built and we'll start sales in two years time? Well, I often get that, asked that question. And what I tell potential investors is that look at the big picture. We know grid storage batteries are growing at 28% compound annual growth rate. We know that the market for batteries is nascent and growing very, very quickly at 28% compound annual growth rate. We know that wherever renewables are being produced, batteries are going to be required. If we can get this 120 megawatt hour plant funded into construction, we will immediately turn our attention to replicating it into a gigawatt or we're talking a four gigawatt hour plant internally and then we have the worldwide rights of manufacturing licensing and distribution so we can replicate this model in other places around the world obviously the usa is a leader in renewable energy california uh, for the first time ever a few weeks ago the biggest source of energy into the grid on one evening was not from the usual suspects, nuclear, gas, renewables, or coal. Six gigawatt hour of battery capacity, six gigawatt hour of battery energy was put into the grid on one evening, which surpassed any other source of energy. That's an indication of where grids are going. Um, so I would suggest to a potential investor, this is a product for the future. The demand is going to grow exponentially and they should look at investing in the company with that in mind.